Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 23, we're going to look at the Feast of the Lord. We've already seen this before. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. It's important. Say unto them, Concerning the Feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, that's a calling or assembly. So when they gather together, it's holy. Even these are my feasts. Six days, number one, shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. The holy convocation, you shall do no work therein. It's the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So that seventh day. That seventh day marked the six days of creation and the seventh day that God rested. Number two. These are the feasts of the Lord, even the holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Okay? Make an announcement. Put it on a calendar. Cry out. Here comes the feast. In the fourteenth day of the first month, at even, 6 p.m., is the Lord's Passover. And this pictures Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Number three. And on the fifteenth day of the same month, Abed, one day after the Passover, it's a feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days, this one seven days long, you shall ye must eat unleavened bread. But on the first day ye shall have and holy convocation, this would be the 15th, ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. And the seventh day is a holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work therein. Okay, this pictures the memorial. Of Jesus Christ the suffering lamb the sacrifice now let's look at this for a minute seventh day Sabbath verses 1 2 and 3 Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday boom Saturday that's the Sabbath 14th day of the first month so the calendar begins on the new moon that starts the first. So, that 14th day is the day that when that lamb is to be killed, it is the day that Jesus Christ died, suffered on that cross. The 14th day, Three days later and three nights later, the seventh, 14, 15, 16, I'm making sure. The 17th day is the day that Jesus Christ arose from the grave. Right in the middle of the unleavened bread feast. That 14th day of the first month does not fall on the same day. The calendar's all messed up, the Roman calendar. Jesus died in Roman times under a Roman calendar. So it's not, okay, here's the Sabbath rest 
Jesus died on Friday, and then three days later, it don't make sense. In addition to the Sabbath rest, that week you had the Passover. And three days and three nights later, you get the first day of the week. Because this is interesting, the way this is laid out. Sabbath, that, that, that's, that's Saturday. The Lord Jesus Christ suffers and dies on the 14th of the month. They had to take them off the cross. And they had to prepare that lamb. And when it gets dark, they got to slay that lamb. And then the 15th begins what we're reading now, the unleavened bread. And we pick up verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them when ye be come into the land and not there yet which I give unto you read that to the United Nations read that to Saudi Arabia the Arabians in Jordan and England that land has been given to the Jew by God ye shall reap the harvest thereof go out and get your crops then you shall bring a sheaf, that's what you put, it's like an overhead kind of case, you can see pictures online, of your first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Now we're looking at Christ the risen, the first fruits of Christ. He gets those first fruits. When Christ died, Graves of the Old Testament saints were taken, they were open, and they walked around. And we can only assume when he's ascended in Acts chapter 1, that's when they went up. Those were the first fruits. Those were the Old Testament saints that did right. He shall wave the sheaf offering before the Lord. That's wave. To be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So... Sunday morning after the Sabbath, Saturday. Sunday morning is when you're to wave this offering. After the Sabbath. Well, isn't that interesting? Because the first day of the morning, Jesus Christ resurrected from the grave. He shows up unto Mary. He shows up with Peter and, and John running to the tomb. And there's the empty tomb. He shows up in the, in the road that he named this for the two disciples. The first day of the week, and there it is mentioned in Leviticus 23, the day after. Because you're going to get rid of the Sabbath for the church age. The church age is the first day of the week. You shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf offering, uh, the sheaf and lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And that's Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. He just came out of hell. And walked across that goal. And the meat offering there shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil. Holy Spirit. An offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet Savior. Please God. It pleased God to bruise Jesus Christ. God enjoyed that. That Jesus Christ was that sacrifice for mankind. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine. They offer Jesus vinegar. He says, I thirst. There is in the Bible, whenever Jesus said, I, I, I need a drink, they never ever gave him anything. The fourth part of a hen is a measurement. Ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn, nor green ears. Until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your Lord. So you you harvest. You're on your way to Jerusalem. Don't eat what you just picked. That first tomato is not mine. Under the law, if I lived in the law, that's God's. I take the first tomatoes I pick. I bring them to God. I bring them to the priest. He weighs them before God. God says, I'm pleased. And the priest get it. That's their food. You go back home and wait for it to be the crops to come in. 
brought an offering unto your God, it shall be a statute forever, forever, throughout your generations and all your dwellings. That's going to be the tribulation, that's going to be the millennium, and that's going to be in eternity. He shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, first day of the week, from the day that we brought the sheath of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths be complete. So when you're at that tabernacle on the, the first day of the week, from that time, count seven Sabbaths, seven weeks. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, you shall number 50 days. 50 days after. This is 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we have Pentecost when Peter is preaching in Acts chapter 2. Christ has already assumed into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. And when we see the men gather together and Peter preaches on Acts chapter 2. The beginning of the church. The church began really in Acts chapter 2. The death, burial, and resurrection. Christ has ascended to the Father. Watch this feast. Watch it. Even unto the morrow after the seventh after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new, new, new. That's an interesting word. Meat offering unto the Lord. You shall bring out of your Habitations, two wave loaves of two tenth deal. Now you got two of them. Let's see why in a minute. They shall be of fine flour. It's funny how oil is missing. I don't know why. They shall be bacon. That's an interesting word. Bacon. I know it's not spelt like pork, but bacon. Now look at that. With leaven. That's the Gentiles. The two wave offerings. That's the Gentiles will be joined in the church soon. On Pentecost. The foretelling of God that there's going to be something happen at Pentecost. After your Messiah has risen from the grave and has gone off to the Father. You're going to gather together, and in the rest of the book of Acts, chapter 8, you'll see an Ethiopian. Chapter 10, you'll see an Italian. And then from there, you'll start seeing these people who are unclean, savages, dogs, start coming in. Now watch this. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. We are the first fruits. We have taken part in that resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He shall offer with the bread seven lambs. Anybody care how many church periods there are? Without blemish. Anybody care how many letters Paul wrote to churches? And a young bullock. And two rams, and they shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, with their meat offerings and their drink offerings. Even, and, uh, you know, what I think these men are what? What do you think? I think they're drunk. I think they're intoxicated. Peter says, "At this hour of the day, that we're not intoxicated. We know exactly. We have drunken of the Holy Spirit. That's what we drink of." Be ye not drunk of excess, but but take part of the drink of the Holy Spirit. Drink offerings, even offering made by fire, cloven tongues of. Showing you what the Bible says later on. And sweet savor unto the Lord. That afternoon, that morning that Peter preached at the Pentecost, God said, I like that. That is good. That's good preaching, Peter. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats.
for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace harp. Now let me ask you something. Where is it recorded in Acts chapter 2 that Peter or any of those disciples did that? They don't. They go on preaching to Jesus Christ and there is no sacrifice brought to God. Jesus Christ is the sacrifice. And the priest shall wave them with, their, with the bread, the first fruits for the wave offering before the Lord. While they're having that meeting, the priests are at the tabernacle doing what they're doing right now. And God says, I'm not satisfied with that any longer. You want to be satisfied with me and I want to be satisfied with you? You better bring a lamb. Peter said, repent and be baptized after you believe. With two lambs, they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. He shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be a holy convocation. Acts chapter 2. All the Jews from all the regions. There they are. He shall do no servile work therein. They're listening to Peter. They're listening to the, the disciples. It shall be a statue forever in your dwellings throughout your generation. When you reap the harvest of your land, this is a little side note, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. Leave some behind. Don't go back and re-harvest what you left. Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them now watch this. This little side note. Unto the poor and to Ruth. The great grandmother of Jesus Christ and Boaz. There they are again. There is the story of book, the book of Ruth. In Leviticus 23-22. And from Boaz and Ruth you will get Jesus Christ. Lead them unto the poor and to the stranger, Gentile. Moabites were strangers. I am the Lord your God. Matter of fact, Moabites were forbidden to be in the congregation, but not a Moabite this. The woman. Isn't it great how God left a leeway for a woman named Ruth? The foreknowledge of God. Number six. The Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the children of Israel. Saying, okay, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, a gathering of Israel. Those trumpets were to say, all Israel come, assemble together, or we're going to have a war. Gather up the the armies and holy convocation this symbolizes the regathering of the future of Israel as a nation we jumped right over the church age right over the tribulation period to the seventh year of the tribulation period when Jesus comes and he gathers up the Jews where's the church the church is from chapter uh, this ch verse 15 Including a, a Moabitess in verse 22. And the tribulation is not even mentioned. Ye shall do no servile, servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And at the millennium, at the second advent when Jesus Christ comes and gathers those Jews up. They'll be offering to him, the Messiah. And the Bible says that that Messiah, Jesus, is Jehovah. There it is. Mark that one down. The one that comes and gathers those Jews up is Jesus Christ. And he's Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. There he is. Number seven. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, 
there shall be a day of an atonement. This is that time when the priest goes in twice unto the most holy place. Once for him and once for the people. This is that one time of the year. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This is the day of atonement when Jesus Christ comes back and receives those Jews. And God says, I will wash away their iniquities and their sins I will remember no more. Done by the high priest who does not need to go in and enter his sins. He goes in and enters for the sins of the nation of Israel. You have now begun the millennium after the trumpet when Jesus comes. He shall do no work in the same day, for it is a day of an atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whosoever so it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Whatsoever so it be that doeth any work in that same day. That same soul will I destroy from among his people. When would you see that word? That's how holy the day of, day of atonement is. Ye shall do no manner of work. I, I keep saying that. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, even though it's not the Sabbath, as the Sabbath shall be a Sabbath of rest. You shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the, of the month at even, 6 p.m., from even unto even, 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., shall ye celebrate, celebrate your Sabbath. Number eight. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days. That's interesting. This one's a week long. Now make a comment when we're done. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Okay, so... Don't take care of your sheep. Seven days shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. He shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It's a solemn assembly. He shall do no servile work therein. Unless you're a priest and you have to perform an operation. Jesus told the priest, I mean, if you find an animal stuck in a pit on the Sabbath, don't you take care of them? If you find somebody that, such as circumcision, don't you do it even if it's the Sabbath? Yeah, we do. Okay. So, i got to find where I was. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire, unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and a drink offering, everything upon his day, his day, and where did the his come from, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, it's his day, the Bible says Job cursed his day, what was that? That's the day he was born. Let's keep reading. We're getting interesting, aren't we? Eighth day, seven days, no work, shepherds, his day. Besides the Sabbath of the Lord, besides your gifts, don't you bring gifts on somebody's day? And besides all your vows, besides all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Lord, also the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a holy Sabbath, and on the eighth day 
again, verily, verily, we're repeating this one, shall be a Sabbath. He shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. He shall reach a uh, uh, flax, he shall not bend or break. He shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Oh Lord God, I thank you. Show me this special baby here, the Messiah. Now let me go in grace. Oh, let me hold that little baby. Sure, Anna, take her. Take him. He shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever of your generations. Ye shall celebrate in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths. So this is the time when all the fairs get together and you you know the ten cent booth throw balls and the, the kissing booth and get your pies at this booth and get your tickets at that booth. You didn't know why you did that, didn't you? That are Israelites born. Israelites born. Where have you seen that one? I haven't seen that one in this chapter yet. Shall dwell in booths. This is called the Feast of Tabernacles. The indwelling of God. The, the, get yourself some wood and build yourself a hut. And dwell seven days with an eighth day with a mention of his day. Don't do no works as you leave your flocks behind and go to a certain place and worship God. And on the eighth day you bring God, Jesus Christ, to the temple. And, uh, oh boy, I forgot his name. Simeon picks him up and blesses God. And uh, Anna takes up Jesus Christ. If you're going to pick a day for God to be manifested in the flesh, to be born on a specific day that would match the feast days of God, it would be the seventh day on the 15th day of that month would be a great perspective of assumption of when Jesus Christ was born. And look at the key words on, from verses 33 to 43. Tabernacle. When God became in the flesh. A tabernacle. The Bible. Jesus takes a blind man. He says, what do you see? I see men as trees walking. And several places in the Bible, trees are a type of a person. Family tree. Cells needs water that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, uh, Jesus went down to Egypt and came out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Praise God. Look for Jesus.